Hello ENFPs! So today I'm making this video just in case any of you out there really need a fellow ENFP such as myself to give you some insight into what you should do if you hate your job. So I wanted to make this video because a lot of ENFPs tend to come to me for advice in tarot reading and coaching capacities regarding this question. And that question is, what do I do if I hate my job? How can I possibly escape? All my options are limited because I just don't know if I can handle working a nine to five. Now, I'm aware that most of us aren't really cut out for the way the traditional work industry is structured. And even if we have found some way to survive within it, we are probably still constantly in self-loathing and constantly just doubting ourselves. And the short answer is that you probably can't really handle it because it wasn't really designed to be handled in a traditional sense. Even the ESTJs I know who are like really good at like fitting into this workforce for the most part because they're efficient, because they're detail-oriented, yada yada, all these things, even they resent their job to some extent. This nine to five was really cut out for people who had a two person household where someone was staying at home, watching the kids, doing the dishes, doing all that stuff. And then someone else was responsible for making money and basically being the breadwinner. So with all of that, basically it comes down to you probably don't know as a young adult how to both do your job and also take care of everything at home. And if you're an ENFP, you probably feel very trapped. You probably feel like you have no time to do the dishes and clean your room and wash your laundry and run all your errands and also still have like a thriving social life and still make time for yourself. My advice to specifically ENFPs, and I guess anyone who maybe is trying to escape is to stop thinking that it's like an all or nothing where either you put up with this work culture for God knows how much longer that you have to live, or you just you know quit your job and do like something else that's your own thing. You actually have to separate the idea of your career bringing you fulfillment and your passion. Sometimes it's really good and you can have both, but I think that being willing to find your passion in something else is what would sustain the momentum to even have a side hustle. Right now, your goal is to not chase something and to tell yourself that tomorrow will be better once you've made like whatever amount of money in your side business. If you do end up having one that will get you to escape your current job. The main thing is to actually have a different mentality and mindset. And you have to think of what am I going to do to make every single day enjoyable? until I figure out what I want. You will only be able to achieve the energy to do the things you need to do if you're prioritizing and infusing joy into what you're doing after work. If work isn't what's bringing you joy, you need to find it in something else. Contrary to what people think, we actually do have usually enough time. It's the energy that we don't usually focus on when it comes to trying to do more. Within self-care, if you're not taking time to do things that re-energize you, you're really going to burn out on doing the things that you definitely don't like doing, which are like SI-oriented tasks. Instead, you need to focus on things that make your FI, your introverted feeling, happy. Like, you need to find time to make everyday fun. You need to identify then what makes everyday fun for you. But you can't make any major life decisions until you have the fun back in. When you can take joy in something consistently making you able to like reflect or able to feel yourself having hope and optimism again or something to look forward to like after work, then you will know and have the brain space to have creativity. It does come down to that the day-to-day is what's going to inform whatever you end up choosing. So even if you're doing like a side hustle, it it may be designed to bring you that joy. Like maybe you enjoy crafting, maybe you enjoy tarot reading, maybe you enjoy, I don't know, like recreational volleyball. I don't actually know how that could end up becoming a side hustle, but like, you know, the first two I named, they could. Sensibly though, I will say that if you don't enjoy the process of trying to craft a new idea for your future, and you're depending on that idea to bring you salvation from your current reality, you're not going to move as fast as you want. You're going to trade one problem for another. So my 
ploy to you is how can you look at your entire day, even outside of that job, as something that could potentially bring you joy? If your job is making you that miserable, the moment that you clock out, you have to have a plan ready to not just relax, but to also re-energize. Because if you can't infuse active joy into your life, then you're going to have no energy to motivate yourself to do anything else to build. So a big thing about being an ENFP is that if you don't narrow in like all the potential routes to solving an issue, you're going to overwhelm yourself with the magnitude of the issue in general. My advice is that you need to vision board, but not conventionally about what you want. In the future, you need to actually think about vision boarding the past. So you look at literally every single college extracurricular that you've ever done. You look at every single volunteer program that you might have participated in. You look at every single time you saw something on Instagram that reminded you of something that you could enjoy doing because of the fact that it reminds you of some other thing that you've done before that you enjoyed. You actually have to reference completely starting over what you've liked in the past and use that as a reference point. So this video isn't a how to pick a better career necessarily. This video is actually a PSA for anyone who is going to go and watch those videos, who is an ENFP, that additionally to that, you need to figure out a way to stabilize your day-to-day -day because otherwise you're going get, to just get overwhelmed by all of the suggestions about what you need to do. Because the fundamental thing that all of those videos from career coaches have in common is that they require energy to implement. And if you can't find the energy to even listen to them, much less do what they're saying some of the time, then you really need to first be mindful about how you're spending your current energy. It's kind of like if you were trying to live life on a budget, you'd have to also like be investing in something that's going to make you back money, not just saving every penny, right? And when we're in survival mode, we really do feel like saving and trying to not spend, but sometimes you have to invest in something that will make you returns. This is why people hire business coaches and put their money into stocks, because those things are ways to make money so everything you're investing in will give you a return. Similarly, you have to invest energy into having some sort of hobby or some sort of outlet for you to get something back. I don't think watching Netflix is a hobby unless it was like research for like you to like write your own award-winning film or documentary and you got joy out of that process of like maybe taking notes. But otherwise, if you're just focusing on relaxing when you're in your off time, you're never going to get out of that current situation. So for my story, the reason that I now do run a business and I have other gigs that also energize me and so that altogether my days are the kind of days that most people would like to have in terms of my work-life balance. This was ultimately because in college I honed my hobby of tarot reading. Even in college I really hated going to class even though I do like I did like journalism at the time, um, but I really hated being in class. So even though I didn't have a 9-to-5 yet, I already knew that I was probably going to be very subject to burnout. So I found a way to be able to bond with my friends through talking about life's problems in the lens of tarot giving us optimism. And then when I moved to Los Angeles, I was working a job that really was burning me out, and I found joy in going out for a drink after work, one drink, and doing tarot cards with people. And eventually that led to me getting more gigs vending tarot at markets on the weekends. So even though I wasn't exactly happy at my job, I still had a way out. And then when I got fired in 2019, I realized that I had a lifeline because to deal with that problem, I would play with my tarot cards. And then I realized I could start to try to make this into my full-time gig. So I slowly but surely found other ways to supplement the income on the side and then just got better at tarot and got more opportunities to vend. Now, two years later, I'm in a position where my hobby has become basically my full time and I can charge the prices I want because of that experience. But you see, it started out as a way for me to feel like life was worth living. And I'm not saying that your side hustle will ultimately be on the same trajectory that mine was, but it's important for you to have something in your life that's giving you that outlet to re-energize. Otherwise, you'll have no creative space to even 
be able to be motivated to go down a different route. For me, at least, with tarot reading, I had so much joy out of reading for each and every client. I was already so grateful that I'd be paid even $20 that I wasn't trying to count the days down until I'm like successful and big. To be fair, I really could be making more money right now. Um, and I am trying to manifest that. And it's hard to not envy people that are making more than me. But because the work I am doing is so enriching and has always been enriching even before it was for money, that was what gave me the momentum to even get to where I am now, which I recognize a lot of people want to figure out how they can do it. So if you watch this video and you hate your job and you have like some kind of dream or passion that you want to pursue but you're like scared of, I would highly suggest you find a way to make it re-energizing right now and to have even the creation process be the gift that's giving back. So like, for example, if you want to be a YouTuber, which again, like I'm not someone in a position to really speak because I'm not exactly a big YouTuber or even a small YouTuber yet, at the same time, making all of these videos is freaking fun. Like I enjoy it. Like this 30 day challenge hasn't really been hard in terms of content. It's been hard to find the time above all in my busy day, but it really does put a spring in my step and I'm proud of the work I do just for me. And I think a lot of YouTubers I've been actually watching who explain how they got big really fast and monetized really fast, the one thing that they don't talk about is that they got joy out of the creation to begin with. They talk about like just keep posting consistently, which is, yes, like the kind of generalized version of take joy in posting and you'll end up being consistent. Because the thing that runs consistency is desire. And as an ENFP, you have plenty of it. So if, you're, if you are going to be a YouTuber, you have to pick a topic that you actually like. And then you do the other stuff, like look at the SEO, of what's trending, all this stuff. Because if you don't actually like it, you're not going to get the content value and the catchy personality. That's also part of why YouTubers get big. So every hobby you monetize, you have to start with, you like this. You desire it. You would be doing this for free even if it never got you anything. And so at the end of the day, you have to think of my income from my current job that I hate. If I think of it as like a stabilizing support force for me to be grateful for, and then I can transfer to my hobby and having energy for that hobby because I'm not worrying about money, then you'll be in a better position to do things. Obviously, and I can't speak to literally every ENFP who's watching this, but I can say that foundationally, we do run very effectively on desire. So if you know that you don't like your job and whether you are trying to apply for a different one but don't quite know if it's the right fit or whether you're trying to start a side hustle or whether you're trying to figure out a way to stay at the current job, you need energy. You need to find the joy in everyday life again. And so I'm employing you to start from that. Make a list of things that bring you joy and re-energization. And emphasize those things. Make that the priority. Your dirty laundry, it, you don't really need to do it probably that exact day you're doing it unless you've been putting it off. But even then, find time to always prioritize something that will re-energize you. Because otherwise, your life force will burn out. You'll be a shell of a person. And then you'll be more prone to making a bad decision when you're on low energy. So first and foremost, before you do anything, start to re-energize. This has been a PSA with Crystal Duan for ENFPs or for anyone who is interested in the perspective of an ENFP. And yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video and got something out of it.